Hello friends, welcome back to hi games my name is Joseph and today on PlayStation News, Sony may announce a pro-style controller for PS5, Take-Two boss praises PlayStation Plus and some updates on the service, recaps of both the Final Fantasy VII and Dragon's Dogma events, a TMNT Shredder's Revenge mini-review roundup and more. Let's get into them. We start with rumors that Sony may be working on a pro-style controller for PS5, that's according to industry insider Tom Henderson over at Try Hard Guides. He received some pictures from the prototype and the controller has removable analog sticks, trigger stops, rear buttons and even removable grips. You will be able to remove the entire analog stick unit which may help against any issues like drift. It's unclear when Sony would announce this but Henderson source only said it would be soon and several other sources say the company will announce new accessory hardware at the end of the month. Stroh Selnick, CEO of Take-Two has shared his thoughts on the new PlayStation Plus service. In an interview with GameIndustry.biz, he said his skepticism has been around making frontline console products available day and date with a subscription. It's something that doesn't make sense for him economically speaking, and they can afford the business to turn upside down in a way it doesn't make sense economically. And he thinks Sony agrees based on this new service proposal. He believes subscription services can be great for catalog properties and games that have been in the market for a while. I can see his point of view, after all games are expensive to make, but on the other side, Microsoft has made it a great selling point on Xbox. But what do you think? We stick with PlayStation Plus for a couple of updates, sadly not good ones. First we know the games leaving PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium catalogs in the next few months. Shadow Warrior 3 leaves this July 5th in less than a month. NBA 2K22 and FIA WRC10 both leave this August 31st and Red Dead Redemption 2 leaves the service on September 20. The next update is regarding Resident Evil 7 for PS5. The upgraded version launched this week, but sadly you can claim it if you got it for free via the PlayStation Plus collection. So we're in a similar situation as Final Fantasy VII Remake last year, and that ended up being upgradable for free to Plus users, hopefully this one follows suit. A new Share Factory update is now available for PS5 introducing Beats, a new editing experience to personalize and share your gameplay moments. You can choose from several beat styles that are templates of a familiar or trending meme, complete your editing and send it to your phone via the auto upload feature to share everywhere. You can download Share Factory for free from the PlayStation Store. Destruction All-Stars is also getting a new update with more content starting this June 22nd with the launch of the new PlayStation Plus service in Europe. It will introduce events that will be new modes or playlists happening for 6 weeks and an all-star pass to work through. The first event is Rise on June 22nd with a new mode called Jump Shot where you score points with the help of your team. Unite and Survive are the next two events happening on August 10 and September 28 respectively. Naughty Dog has posted a new shot comparing the original The Last of Us to the remake as part of the 9th anniversary of the game this past June 14. Neil Druckmann mentioned they will be able to show off Annie Wershing's acting shops with the Part 1 remake. It's insane how the character looks for the remake, almost lifelike. Sony Pictures has announced a release date for the Gran Turismo movie for August 11, 2023, directed by District 9's Neil Blomkamp. Deadline has shared the main plot for the movie and it's the ultimate wish fulfillment tale of a teenage Gran Turismo player whose gaming skills won a series of Nissan competitions to become an actual professional race car driver. This is based on a true story from Spanish driver Lucas Ordóñez, who became a real-life driver after graduating from Gran Turismo and the Nissan GT Academy. Do you think this will be a great movie? Are you interested in it knowing the plot? Let's get into the big news this week as Square celebrated the Final Fantasy 25th anniversary with a short 10-minute presentation and it was freaking amazing. Zack Fair is back with Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion, a remaster of the PSP game that served as a prequel to the main story of Final Fantasy VII. It's launching for PS4 and PS5 besides Xbox Series, Nintendo Switch and PC this winter. It was not his only appearance as they later showed him in the reveal trailer for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, part 2 of the remake series. They have officially announced the remake series will be structured into three games, but didn't share what the third one is going to be titled. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth launches exclusively for PS5 in winter 2023. Elsewhere and not related to PlayStation was a trailer for Ever Crisis launching for mobile, hopefully on consoles at some point, the Season 3 content for their Battle Royale First Soldier, Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1 releasing on Steam and optimized for Steam Deck, and some collectible figures, music collectibles and merchandising. 
That was not the only presentation as Capcom for some reason had a Dragon's Dogma 10th anniversary celebration at the same time. The presentation had the team showing their journey and inspiration for the series, with director Hideaki Itsuno confirming that Dragon's Dogma 2 is currently in development. There's not a lot of information about it, only the logo and that it's being developed with the Resident Evil engine. I think it should be fair to expect it on PS4 and PS5 at some point in the future. Moving on, Atlus has confirmed the release of the remastered Persona games announced at the Xbox Showcase last Sunday. Persona 5 Royal is getting a PS5 upgrade this October 21st, while Persona 4 Golden and Persona 3 Portable are being launched as PS4 versions. They are still playable on PS5 but won't include any features like DualSense support, direct SSD use, or 3D audio. It's also weird there's no direct port as they have separate versions for Xbox One and Xbox Series consoles, so maybe they will confirm or launch them later. Amazon seems to have leaked the beta date for Modern Warfare 2. According to their original product description, codes will be sent by August 15, which suggests could be start of the beta period. It's not clear if that's when the beta starts for all platforms, but Activision confirmed when the game was revealed that the beta will launch first on PS4 and PS5. Related to Call of Duty Season 4 of Vanguard and Warzone is called Mercenaries of Fortune and launches June 22nd with new maps, new weapons, new operators, and a battle pass. Another Activision game getting a beta is Overwatch 2, starting this June 28th on PS4 and PS5. It will move then into free-to-play early access for PS4 and PS5 on October 4th. Season 1 will start that same day with 3 new heroes, 6 new maps, a new mode, and skins. Season 2 brings a new tank hero, a new map, new skins, and a new battle pass on December 6th. They also promise the same continued support all throughout 2023. TMNT Shredder's Revenge is now out and the reviews say it's amazing. Polygon's Nicole Carpenter said the game is so mechanically satisfying, so endearingly fun, that she couldn't wait to hop back into the familiar environment, which reminds her so much of crouching around that TV as a kid all those years ago. Mitchell Saltzman from IGN indicated Shredder's Revenge more than lives up to the legacy of the TMNT arcade games that inspired it. It's fun yet simple gameplay, excellent co-op for up to 6 players online, and charming pixel-based art style will truly have 90s kids riding the wave of nostalgia all the way to its end. While the Push Square staff review points at Shredder's Revenge being a superb beat-em-up that captures the spirit of Konami's coin-up classics, but modernizes them in all the right areas. With a smooth combat, gorgeous presentation, and rock-solid rollback netcode, it all adds up to deliver a super fun experience. TMNT Shredder's Revenge has an 87 score on Open Critic with 63 reviews, and an 85 on Metacritic with 20 reviews. And those are all our stories for today on this episode of PlayStation News. Are you interested in a Pro Controller for PS5? What do you think about all the reveals at the Final Fantasy VII event? Will you be playing TMNT Shredder's Revenge? Share your thoughts on any of these stories in the comments below, like or dislike to share your feedback, check out other videos you may enjoy while you're here, and consider subscribing for more PlayStation content. Thank you so much for watching, my name is Joseph, this is Hype4Games, and let's get hyped!